and now hold your breath. 10 years from now, they say AI will be a billion times smarter than the human. Henry Kissinger, this great diplomat, what does he tell us about AI? He says AI is only 20-30% about coding. Large-scale information networks have two components. One is the mythology. Mythology means what? Storytelling, story making. That is very important. And the second is the bureaucracy to implement. But I will have to subscribe to the mythology of the Ayatollah. We will have an AI arms race which will produce the most destructive weapons ever. I am an artillery officer. In my days, we completed an artillery shoot in 35 to 40 minutes. AI is going to be the new myth maker. So viewers, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk today about a subject which fascinates me greatly, artificial intelligence. I hope the sum of what I say will also draw your attention and fascinate you equally. I am going to talk about how in the wake of artificial intelligence, the world may be reborn and remade. So please, please note, reborn and remade. That's how important artificial intelligence could be. And we will also see how artificial intelligence or AI is going to impact the balance of power. For those of you who are interested in this subject, do read and I, my, this video has been inspired by these gentlemen, so I must acknowledge it by Yuval Harari, Rajiv Balhotra, Mustafa Suleiman and a gentleman called Muhammad Gwadat. Fascinating minds on artificial intelligence, so do try and read them. So the case that I wish to make or place before you is this that there is widespread consensus amongst all experts that in the wake of AI, the world will be reborn and remade. There seems to be no dispute on that. Look at the intellectual power, horsepower of AI. I'm told the smartest human being that the world has ever seen, Albert Einstein, his IQ was 160, 160. Chat GPT-4, IQ 155. Chat GPT-6, two to three years down the line, IQ 1550. And now hold your breath. 10 years from now, they say AI will be a billion times smarter than the human. Difficult to sink in, billion times. The only disagreement is whether that year will be 2035, 2037 or 2039. But everybody is, you know, agreed on this. And look how the game is trending in AI. I'm told that the real game in AI is only in the frontier models, which are two or three of them. And who, who is, you know, leading the game in frontier models? US and China. Each of these models, they are huge energy guzzlers. So if India is to get into frontier AI, it'll need massive investments in green energy and power. As also each of these models, because of all complications of optimizing data, quality of training, each of it costs $350 billion. So not very affordable, only, you know, US and China can do it. So what will be the consequence of all this? Before that, there was good news about seven, eight months back that the gap between the frontier and trailing models was reducing, which means countries like India and the others could catch up. Now, because of the competition between US and China, the gap between the frontier and trailing models has increased, which means what? that it is only these two countries who will lead the AI game, who will prosper in the AI game. And so 10 years from now, you will have AI hegemons. So if we don't step up our act and we are not in the frontier models, we will get the fruits of AI all right, but we will not set the pace. And we all know in international relations, if you are not on the table, you are on the menu. So, you know, why I'm highlighting all this is that we must, we need to take note of this. Henry Kissinger, this great diplomat, what does he tell us about AI? He says AI is only 20-30% about coding. The rest is about a philosophy, a strategy, safety, your values, whole statecraft. So this is the time for Indian statecraft to come together. And if the world is getting reborn and remade, why not remake it in Indian sensibilities in accord with our own cultural wisdom? Because it is the data which goes into AI, which will churn out what kind of AI India will consume and how AI will shape the world. 
Henry Kissinger says that because there is a larger lack of a larger philosophical view, strategy, concepts on AI, we are letting the technologists run riot. So AI is not merely about coders and coding, about the large language models. The historians, the anthropologists, those in international relations, diplomats, we all have to realize. So there has to be an AI awakening in India through our university systems, through our schools and colleges. If we are you know, going to get equal, equal, equal in this game of AI, AI will have an agency of its own. I'm quoting Yuval Harari. It will be the first technology in history which can create new ideas, make decisions on its own. Can you imagine that? On its own. So it will impact our information systems. It is already doing. Today you can't differentiate a deep fake from what is real. Bloomberg, I am told, churns out 70% of its articles through machines. By next year, you will not be able to trust online information. It is affecting our networks, our economies, our politics, our culture, for fighting and deterrence. Another perspective on AI, you know, and this is through the prism of networks. So I'm told that human existence is defined in terms of networks. So a family is a network, a nation is a network, an empire is a network, our religious systems are networks, network of temples, network of churches, and all large scale information networks have two components. One is the mythology. Mythology means what storytelling, story making. That is very important. And the second is the bureaucracy to implement. Now, what is happening in these two fields? So what is mythology? I may be a very sharp nuclear physicist in Iran, but I will have to subscribe to the mythology of the Ayatollah. So the storytelling narrative. And what is happening is that in the realm of storytelling, AI is going to be the new myth maker. It will create stories of its own. Chat GPT-4 is already doing it. You can see how fluency in human conversations means it can tell you, it can write essays on science, it can churn out pieces on history, it is doing myth making. Prospectively, it could become the best storyteller. So this is what uh, AI will do. The other area, bureaucracy, is equally fascinating. Uh, you know, bureaucracies we have all known are basically human bureaucracies. But today what is happening, computers are emerging as the new bureaucracy with the politics of its own. Can you imagine? Computer politics. But see, look at this. Uh, they are creating a network of their own and excluding humans. Look at this example from Google Brains. So what Google Brains did, it, they took three computers. Let's call them A, B and C. Now, A and B were exchanging encrypted messages and C was told to break the codes in a given time. And each time C broke the code, it got some marks. And if it failed, A and B got marks. But what happens curiously after 15,000 such exchanges, A and B come up with a secret encryption that C cannot break. And Google engineers did not teach A and B anything about encryption. In these 15,000 exchanges, they learned how to develop a secret code. And it was a code which C could not break. Look at how computers are networking. Look at this, you know, what we may call computer politics. And this is only 80 years since the first digital computers were built. So where computers will go in terms of proficiencies in the next 50, 100 years is quite unbelievable. We've all heard about the domain of foreign exchange. So it is a global market for exchanging foreign currencies. It determines exchange rates, rupee versus dollar, euro and dollar. You know, what is the, uh, the rate for exchange? I'm told in April 2022, the trade volume in Forex was $7.5 trillion per day. India's economy is only $3 trillion. So you'll get an idea. And 90% of this trading was being done by computers, computers talking to computers. There was no human agency. So this is what computers are doing. And the larger lesson is this, that since life emerged 4 billion years ago, all information networks have been largely organic by humans. But no modern networks like the ones that I have just described, the humans are being excluded. 
And we could have information networks in the future which will be dominated by inorganic computers. No human agency which will bring about unimaginable change. Look at how AI is impacting geopolitics and possibly Cold War 2.0. We know that we are in the shall we say the mid slopes or the peaks of a new Cold War 2.0 between a US led West and a rivalrous new axis China, Iran, Russia, North Korea. Now what could happen uh, once again Yuval Harari he says that first Cold War there was the Iron Curtain. In this Cold War you could have a silicon curtain on codes and chips based on codes and chips and it's happening to divide the two blocks. We will have an AI arms race which will produce the most destructive weapons ever. You, we all know that in 2017 the London health system was attacked by a, a cyber weapon but it was overcome by patches. An AI enabled cyber weapon will find its way through patches. There is no patch which can contain an AI enabled cyber weapon. So these are great dangers. But what this silicon curtain will do, codes and chips, it will not only divide the two orders, which is, you know, separate one group of humans from another. So perhaps splitting the internet, creating exclusive digital empires. But what is worse is that also, it will also create a curtain between we humans and our AI overlords. Now, what are AI overlords? They are unfathomable algorithms that manage our lives, shape our politics, our culture, and I said everything else, information systems, so on, so and so. And they are non-human intelligence. So this could be a possibility where the world is driven by non-human intelligence, algorithms that rule the world, the beginning perhaps of an artificial intelligence empire. One last word on how AI is already impacting deterrence and war fighting for those of you who are interested in this domain. So we have seen in Ukraine, Palantir, which is a startup which used AI to power data analytics. Today, fire, maneuver, targeting, surveillance, intelligence, decision making, the OODA loop is all driven by AI. And those who have embraced AI are ahead in this game. I am an artillery officer. In my days, we completed an artillery shoot in 35 to 40 minutes. Today, these drones, flying binoculars and AI are concluding those shoots in five minutes and devastating accuracy. So AI is already happening. One last word. You know, the problem, I've given you all the challenges, dangers, opportunities in AI. But at the end of the day, the problem is not AI, but the human prompt. So what you do in these training models, how you approach this challenge of AI, if we do it with thought, wisdom, AI sensibilities, we could use AI to drive our own interests. And I would just end by saying that AI has as many positives as it has negatives. But if we do not leverage the positives with thought and wisdom, the negatives will overwhelm us. So that is a short piece on AI. It is a very fascinating subject. As I began uh, urging you, read all those books. Most all Indians need to delve into this topic. It is not something that the government can do or some AI safety institute can do. We have to breathe AI. We, it has to be in our bloodstream because it is a technology, a phenomenon which is going to overtake the world. And if we do not invest it in, in now, we may become, you know, a, not a strategic have, but a strategic have not. Thank you so much. And uh, may I urge all of you to like and subscribe Chanakya Defense Dialogue. Thank you.